All right. So we are diving into a really important topic today. Yeah. Advocating for your autistic child. And I think any parent out there listening who has a child on the spectrum knows this is like a journey, a lifelong journey. Absolutely. We are here to help equip you with uh, some tools, some insights from Mm -hmm. a whole bunch of articles and guides that we've (laughs) digging into. Yeah, we've got a great collection of resources for this deep dive. And we're going to cover like everything from, you know, yeah. understanding your your child's individual needs to navigating yes. the education system, healthcare, even your own self-care as a parent. Oh, that's so important. It really is. Yeah, it's often overlooked. So let's start with that understanding your child's unique needs. Well, you know, it's funny because people will say like, oh, you know, every child's different. Right. But when we're talking about autism, it's like right. no two snowflakes are alike. Right. You know, it's that level of yes. difference. Yeah. And the source material here really mm-hmm. highlights that with some really interesting examples. I'd love to hear some of those. So you might have a child who is an incredible visual learner. Okay. You know, they just soak up information through pictures and diagrams, mm-hmm. but then they struggle with social cues. Yeah. Those unwritten rules that we all kind of navigate. Right. Or you might have a child who has incredibly sensitive hearing Mm -hmm. where everyday sounds that most people wouldn't even notice are just completely overwhelming for them. Wow. So it's really not just about knowing your child has autism. Mm -hmm. It's about understanding their autism. I love that. And that's where this idea of a personalized support plan comes in. Okay. It's like having a roadmap. Yeah. But tailored specifically for your child. So it evolves as they evolve, as their needs change. Exactly. It's not a static document. Yeah. It's an ongoing process. Right. Of observation assessment and adjusting that plan as needed. And speaking of roadmaps, education. Oh, yes. That can feel like a maze for any parent. For sure. But especially when you're trying to advocate for a child with special needs. Absolutely. So where do we even begin? Well, I think one of the most important things to understand is the Individualized Education Program, the IEP. Okay. That's really your roadmap. Oh. But specifically for your child's education, Mm -hmm. it's a legally binding document that spells out your child's needs and how the school is going to meet those needs. So that's reassuring to know that there's something legally in place. Exactly. To protect your child's right. rights and to ensure that they're that's getting what they're Like a contract yes. between you and the school uh, to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Now, I'm guessing that these IEPs don't just like yeah. magically appear. No, they don't. So there are meetings involved. There are discussions. Yes, IEP meetings are where it all happens. You, the parents, the teachers, specialists, administrators all come together. Mm-hmm to create and review this plan. And I can imagine for parents, those meetings can be intimidating. They can be very intimidating. Yeah. Because you're coming in as the expert on your child. Right. But you're surrounded by all these professionals. Yeah, it's like a whole different world sometimes. It is. It's It's like its own language. Yes, its own language and acronyms and things like that. Exactly. So how can parents feel more empowered? Well, preparation is key. Okay. Gather anything and everything that helps paint a picture of your child. Okay. Recent evaluations, work samples, Mm -hmm. notes on behaviors you're seeing at home and at school. Okay. It's like building your child's case. Yeah. Showcasing their strengths and their needs. I like that. And remember, you are your child's voice in that room. Yes. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Mm Mm-hmm. Even if it means asking them to explain something in plain English. Yeah. Break it down. Yes. So you're not just nodding along. Exactly. Pretending to understand. Right. You want to make sure you're truly understanding Absolutely. what's being discussed and what's being decided. So once you have this IEP in place, what are some of the things that can actually make a difference in the classroom? Well, IEPs can include a whole range yeah. of accommodations and modifications. Like what kinds of things? So think about assistive technology. Okay. Things like text-to-speech software yeah. or visual aids Mm -hmm. to help with instructions. Okay. Maybe it's adapting the lesson plans themselves. Okay. Breaking down complex tasks into smaller steps. Right. Or allowing for breaks when sensory overload hits. Okay. It's really about customizing that learning experience. So it sounds like the IEP can really be tailored to your child's individual needs (laughs) and learning style. It's all about individualization. Now, here's the thing, though, right? Yeah. You get this IEP. 
you go to these meetings, mm -hmm. but then the school year starts right. and things change. They always do. Kids change. Their right. needs change. Yes. So how do you ensure that there's ongoing communication? Communication is key. Yeah. You want to have open communication with your child's teachers throughout the year. Okay. Let them know what's working, what's not working. Mm -hmm. Any changes you're noticing at home. Right. It really is a team effort. A true partnership. Yes. Now, beyond education, mm -hmm. another area where being an advocate is so critical. Yes. Healthcare. Healthcare is a big one. It's a big one. Yeah. You become your child's healthcare champion in a way. You do. Navigating a system that can sometimes feel like a jungle. It can feel like a maze. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what's like the first piece of advice when it comes to advocating for your child's health care needs? Find health care providers who truly understand autism. Okay. Look for specialists who can provide that specialized care. Because I think some parents might think, well, any doctor should be able to help. Yeah, and to some extent they can. Yeah. But it's not just about treating symptoms. Mm -hmm. It's about understanding the whole picture. Okay. A specialist mm -hmm. is going to be more attuned to your child's specific needs. Mm -hmm, right. They can make more accurate diagnoses, mm -hmm. and they can recommend treatments that take those needs into account. That makes sense. And they're also going to be up to date on the latest research. Right. And best practices. Now, I know medication management can be a big part of health care for some autistic children. For some, it is. What are the key things that parents should know when navigating that? Well, first and foremost, you have the right to be completely informed about any medication that's being prescribed. Okay. Don't hesitate to ask about potential side effects, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. alternative treatments. Right. The long-term implications. Yeah. You're part of the decision-making process. Mm -hmm. You're not just following orders. So again, you are an advocate. You are an advocate. You're not just a passive Great. recipient of information. You're an active participant. And you know your child best. You do. You're the one living with them day in and day out. Absolutely. So we've covered understanding your child's unique needs. Yes. Navigating education, mm -hmm. being an advocate in healthcare. Yeah. That's a lot. It is. It's a lot to juggle. It is. Are there any like overall strategies or approaches yeah, that yeah. can help parents be more effective advocates? Definitely one of the most important things is knowledge. Okay. Arm yourself with information. Okay. Stay updated on the latest autism research treatment options, relevant policies. Mm -hmm. The more you know, yeah. the stronger your position will be when you're advocating for your child. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power, absolutely. It really is in these situations. It really is. And along with the knowledge. Yes, persistence. Six, persistence is key. Yeah, because this isn't a quick fix. This is not a sprint. It's you, a marathon. Yes. It takes endurance. It takes resilience. It does. You're going to hit roadblocks. You're going to hit real setbacks. Yeah. But you got to keep going. You have to keep going. You're fighting for your child, exactly. their well-being. You are their champion. Yes. Their advocate. And you don't have to do it alone. That's so important to remember. Build a support network. Yes. Connect with other parents of mm. autistic children. Join support groups. Mm -hmm. Find professionals who can offer guidance. Absolutely. Yeah. Because sharing experiences and knowledge can make all the difference. That sense of community is so powerful. It is. Knowing that you're not alone That's... makes those challenges feel a little less daunting. For sure. And speaking of challenges, yes. we can't forget about self-care. Oh, self-care is so important. It's so easy to get caught up in advocating for your child. Yes. That you forget to take care of yourself. You neglect your own needs. But if you're running on fumes, how can you be an effective advocate? You can't pour from an empty cup. So true. It's essential to take care of yourself. So what does self-care actually look like? Well, it can be as simple as scheduling little breaks throughout the day. Okay. Even if it's just for five minutes mm -hmm. to breathe deeply and clear your head. Right. Maybe it's a quick walk outside, mm. reading a few pages of a book, yeah. listening to your favorite song. Yeah. Anything that helps you recharge. Those little moments of respite. Yes. Can make such a difference. They can. And don't forget about seeking support from others. Oh, that's so important too. Whether it's a friend, a family member, a therapist. Well, support they... group. A support group could be wonderful. Sometimes just talking to someone who understands Absolutely. can be so therapeutic. It can be. You know, before we move on to the next yeah. part of our deep dive, mm -hmm. I just want to take a moment 
to acknowledge yes. the incredible strength and dedication Absolutely. of all the parents out there yes. advocating for their autistic children. You are amazing. It's a journey and yes. you are rocking it. You are. Now, we've talked a lot about yeah. understanding your child's needs and mm. how those needs might influence their mm. learning styles and their preferences. And right. One thing that came up in the source material was that some autistic individuals yes. might be drawn to certain careers, Interesting. like pharmacy technology yeah. or biomechanical engineering. Okay, yeah. And it got me thinking, yeah. why might this be? Right. Are there certain cognitive strengths yeah. that are common in autism yes. that might lead to success in those fields? That's a great question. It is. And it's one that we're going to explore further yes. in the next part of our deep dive. Absolutely. We'll delve into those potential strengths okay. and talk about how to help your child discover their passions and interests. Sounds good. And how those passions might translate into future career paths. So stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our deep dive. So right before the break, we were talking about how some autistic individuals might be drawn to certain careers. Right. In like pharmacy tech. Pharmacy tech was one example. Yeah. Biomechanical engineering. Yeah. And it just got me thinking like, are these just random examples oh, or is there something deeper going on here? Yeah. Are there specific well, cognitive strengths that are common? The sources we're looking at actually offer yeah. some interesting insights into this. Okay. It turns out that many autistic individuals have this remarkable ability to hyper-focus on mm -hmm. specific tasks, mm -hmm. to see patterns that others might miss. Interesting. And to think in very systematic ways. So if we connect that to career paths, yes. it makes sense that fields that require that kind of detail-oriented work yes. or a deep understanding of systems might be... You think about a pharmacy tech. Yeah. Accuracy and attention to detail are crucial. All right. Or a biomechanical engineer. Yeah. They need to understand those complex systems mm -hmm, right. and how all the pieces feed together. Yeah. These are strengths that many autistic individuals possess. Mm -hmm. It's almost like those strengths are tailor-made for... Good bet. Certain careers. Yeah. But I'm also wondering, how do we even begin to identify those passions and interests? That's a great question. When a child might not communicate them in no. the same way. Yeah, it requires a little detective work. Okay. Looking for those subtle cues, those sparks of interest. Mm -hmm. You might notice your child gravitates towards certain activities. Okay. Certain books. Yeah. Even objects. Right. Maybe they're fascinated by how things work. Mm -hmm. Or they have a deep love for animals. Okay. So you're really paying attention to those little things. Right. Those glimpses into their world. Mm -hmm. Those little clues. Yes. And once you've spotted those potential areas of interest. Yeah. You can start to create opportunities for your child to explore them further. Okay. Maybe it's enrolling them in a robotics class. Mm -hmm. Visiting a science museum. Providing them with books about marine biology okay whatever sparks that curiosity so you're giving them the tools and the resources to kind of the follow moment. their passions wherever they might lead absolutely now part of that journey yeah. involves preparing them yes for the transition to adulthood oh this is a big one which i imagine can be particularly challenging it can be very challenging for autistic individuals yes what are some of the hurdles that parents should be aware of well, one of the biggest challenges is navigating social situations and relationships. Okay. Many autistic individuals struggle with understanding those unspoken social rules, mm -hmm. interpreting social cues, right. engaging in that back and forth communication. Yeah. And that's such a it's big a, part of adult life. It's a huge part of life. So how can parents help their children develop those social skills? Well, social skills groups can be incredibly helpful. Okay. They provide a safe and structured environment yeah. for practicing those social interactions. Yeah. Role-playing different scenarios okay. can also be beneficial. Yeah. Helping them learn how to respond in various situations. And I imagine romantic relationships <laughs> can be particularly tricky can be to navigate. For anyone. Uh, but especially for someone on the spectrum. Right. Open and honest conversations about relationships are so important. Okay. Talk to your child about healthy boundaries, mm -hmm. consent, mm -hmm. yeah. how to recognize red flags. Right. You can even use examples from movies or TV shows okay. to illustrate different relationship dynamics. So it's about giving them the tools. It is. To understand those complex social and emotional yeah. nuances. Yeah. Now, beyond relationships, hmm. another big hurdle for a lot of young adults yes. is employment. Finding and maintaining employment. 
right. could be a huge challenge. For autistic individuals? For autistic individuals in particular. Why is that? Well, the traditional job search process yeah. with its emphasis on social skills right. and eye contact right. during interviews can be incredibly stressful. It's almost like the system is set up to... It can feel that way. Put them at a disadvantage. Yeah. And on top of that, many workplaces aren't designed huh. to accommodate sensory sensitivities mm. or different communication styles. Yeah. So how can parents help their children overcome these obstacles? Well, starting early with career exploration is key. Okay. Encourage your child to think about their interests. Mm -hmm. Research. Mm. Potential career paths okay. that align with their strength. Right. You can even connect them with professionals in those fields okay. to learn more about what the work actually entails. So once they've identified some potential yes. career paths. What are the next steps? What's next? Well, practice makes perfect. Okay. Even when it comes to job interviews. Mm -hmm. So you can role play okay. different interview scenarios. Okay. Help them develop responses to common questions. Get comfortable talking about their skills and experiences. Okay. And once they land a job, yeah. open communication with employers mm -hmm. is essential. Okay. If your child needs specific accommodations. Right. Like a quiet workspace mm. or flexible scheduling. Okay. It's important to disclose those needs up front okay. and work collaboratively with the employer huh. to find solutions. So again, it's about communication. It's all about communication. You're collaborating collaboration, with working together. Working together as a team. To create a more it's, supportive and inclusive environment. Absolutely. Now, beyond those practical challenges, mm -hmm. there are also emotional and psychological hurdles yes. that many autistic individuals face. For sure. And one thing that the source material really delved into yeah was this concept of masking. Masking. I found this really fascinating. It, it is. Can you break it down for us? Yeah. So masking is this way that many autistic individuals try to fit in that. with neurotypical society. It involves suppressing or hiding autistic traits and behaviors. So they're constantly trying to adapt they are, and conform to expectations yes. that don't come naturally. And don't come naturally to them. I can imagine. That's they're, exhausting. It's incredibly draining. Yeah. And it can lead to burnout over time. So how can parents support their children? Well, creating a safe and accepting environment at home is crucial. Okay. Let your child know that they can be themselves around you. Mm-hmm that they don't have to mask yeah. their autistic traits. That's so important. It is. That unconditional love and acceptance. Yes, creating that space where they can truly be themselves. And also, I would imagine validating yes. their experience. Validating their experiences is so important. Yeah, letting them know it's okay to feel overwhelmed. It's okay to feel frustrated yeah. by that pressure to mask. Right, it's not a weakness. It's not a weakness. It's a natural response oh, to right. a challenging situation. And seeking professional support yeah. can be so beneficial as well. A therapist who specializes in autism can be a wonderful resource yeah. for providing coping mechanisms, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. strategies for managing stress tools, mm -hmm. for building self-esteem. Yeah. They can also help your child explore their identity mm -hmm. and learn to embrace their neurodiversity. So we've covered a lot of ground here. Well, yeah. Exploring passions and interests, mm -hmm. navigating the transition to adulthood, yeah. addressing those emotional challenges yeah. of masking. A lot. As we move into the final part of our discussion, mm. I want to shift gears a bit okay. to talk about something yeah. that I think is often overlooked, mm -hmm. the importance of self-care for parents. Oh, this is so crucial. It really is because yeah. parents of autistic children often yes. put their own needs on the back burner. They do. They're so focused on advocating for their child yeah. that they forget to take care of themselves. And it's impossible to be an effective advocate it if is. you're running on empty yourself. You can't pour from an empty cup. So how can parents prioritize their own well-being? Well, one of the simplest but most effective strategies okay. is to schedule regular breaks throughout the day, mm -hmm. even if it's just for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Use that time mm. to do something you enjoy, Right. whether it's reading a book, listening to mm. music, taking a walk in nature. Those little moments of respite. Those little opportunities to recharge. To recharge and, and make time for activities that nourish your mind, body, and soul. Yes. This might involve exercise, mm -hmm. meditation, spending time with loved ones. Yeah. Pursuing a hobby. Things that bring you joy. Exactly. Things cool. that bring you joy. And what about seeking support from others? 
Oh, this is so important. Because it's easy to feel isolated. It is. When you're facing these challenges yes. day in and day out. Connect with other parents of autistic children. Mm -hmm. Join support groups. Or seek professional help from a therapist. Yeah. Talking to someone who understands your experiences. Right. Can make a world of difference. It really can. It can. So as we wrap up this part of our deep dive. Yes. I want to leave our listeners with a thought. Okay. We've talked about the importance of advocating for your child's needs mm -hmm. within the education system, healthcare, the workplace. Right. But what about advocating for broader societal change? That's a powerful question. For a world that's more inclusive. Absolutely. And accepting of neurodiversity. That's something we'll explore further in the final part of our deep dive. Okay. We'll delve into the concept of neurodiversity, mm -hmm. discuss strategies for creating a more inclusive society. Okay. And empower you to become a voice for change. Sounds good. Not just for your child, mm -hmm. but for all autistic individuals. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. All right, so in this final part of our deep dive, yes. we are going to zoom out a little bit and talk about something much bigger mm -hmm. than any one individual or family, mm -hmm. neurodiversity, yeah, and it. creating a world that truly embraces it. Absolutely. But before we dive into that, yeah. let's just make sure we're all on the same page. Okay. When we say neurodiversity, mm -hmm. what exactly do we mean? So at its core, neurodiversity is this idea that neurological differences, mm -hmm. like autism, ADHD, dyslexia, yeah. These are natural variations in the human brain. Okay. They're not deficits or disorders to be fixed. Mm -hmm. They're simply different ways of experiencing and interacting with the world. So it's about shifting the perspective yes. from seeing these differences as something wrong. Right. To seeing them as part of the beautiful spectrum of human experience. Right. It's about recognizing that the world needs all kinds of minds. Yeah. And embracing neurodiversity means creating a society where everyone... Mm -hmm regardless of their neurological wiring, right. can participate fully and contribute their unique talents and perspectives. That sounds like a pretty amazing world. It does. Honestly. It does. But how do we actually make that happen? Well, like most big shifts, I think it starts with awareness and education. Okay. The more people understand about neurodiversity, mm -hmm. the less likely they are to view it through a lens of fear or prejudice. So talking about it, yes. having these conversations. Having those conversations, normalizing those conversations. With friends, with family, with colleagues. Exactly. Bring it out of the shadows and into yeah. the light. Now, beyond just talking about it, yes, are there things that we can do to advocate for absolutely more inclusive policies yes advocating for inclusive policies and practices in schools and workplaces and community in all areas of life so what might that actually look like so let's take schools for example right. it could mean creating sensory friendly environments okay offering flexible learning options mm -hmm. and providing training for teachers on how to support neurodiverse students yeah, so it's about building that flexibility yeah, and understanding into the system. It's about recognizing that one size doesn't fit all. And what about workplaces? So in workplaces, it might involve offering accommodations. Like what kinds of things? Like quiet workspaces. Okay. Flexible scheduling. Mm -hmm. Clear communication guidelines. Okay. It could also mean moving away from those traditional hiring practices. Right. That often screen out neurodiverse candidates. Yeah. And instead focusing on skills and abilities. So focusing on what people can do. Exactly. Not on how they do it. What they bring to the table. Yeah. The strengths that they bring. Now, beyond policies and practices, yes. there's also this challenge of changing attitudes. This is a big one. And perceptions. Yes. Challenging those negative stereotypes and misconceptions. Which I think a lot of those stereotypes come from yeah. a lack of understanding. I think so, too. People might see certain behaviors and misinterpret them as rudeness or disinterest, right. but in reality, it's just it's a different way, a different way yeah. of communicating. Yeah, of being in the world. Yes. So representation, representation, and visibility are so important. So important. The more we see yes. positive portrayals of neurodiverse individuals in the media, in the media, in books, yeah. Yeah. in our communities, yeah. the more those negative stereotypes will start to fade away. It's about changing the narrative. It is. Showing the world that yes. neurodiversity is not something to be feared or pitied, right. but something to be celebrated Absolutely. and valued. It's about highlighting those unique strengths and talents yeah. that neurodiverse individuals bring to the table. Now, you mentioned advocating for policy changes. Mm -hmm. And 
I think for a lot of people, yeah, that can feel really overwhelming. It can. It's like, where do you even begin? Right. So what advice would you give to parents? Well, you don't have to be a political expert or a seasoned activist. To yeah. make a difference, mm -hmm. start small. Okay. Contact your local elected officials. Okay. Share your story. Mm -hmm. Let them know what changes you'd like to see. Yeah. Support organizations that are working to promote neurodiversity. Right. And advocate for inclusive policies. So it's about finding your own way. Yes. To contribute using your voice using your voice and your experiences your experiences are powerful to push for change they are and change doesn't happen overnight it does it takes time it takes persistence it does it takes the collective effort the collective effort of many voices so as we wrap up this deep dive today yeah i just want to leave our listeners with this thought okay your journey as an advocate mm -hmm. for your autistic child is an ongoing one. It is. Full of challenges and triumphs. It will be. But remember, you are not alone. You are not alone. There are countless resources, organizations, and okay. communities ready to support you. Absolutely. And most importantly, yes. approach this journey with love, with compassion. Yes. An unwavering belief in your child's infinite potential. Beautiful. Because your child has unique gifts to offer the world. They do. And your advocacy will help them shine brightly. It will. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive today. It's been a pleasure. We hope you leave feeling informed, empowered, yeah. and inspired to make a difference. Inspired to make a difference. Both in your child's life and in the world around you. Absolutely. For more information and resources, yes. be sure to visit our website mm -hmm. or connect with us on social media. And until next time, keep learning, keep growing. Keep advocating. Keep advocating. For the amazing neurodiverse individuals in your life. Yes.